Alright, I'm David Smith and we're going to do a short video and show you how to set up the bumper smith and get up to the operation of how to do a weight. Okay, beginning with on setting up your machine, you need to load a bottle of nitrogen into it. This is a three foot bottle. You can buy a four foot bottle or rent one to where you have more repairs that you can make by having the four foot bottle. You slide it in from the left side of the machine. You come over to pull your cap off. Put your gauge on to it. Alright, and tighten your gauge good. Turn your bottle on since you're going to be doing a well. Set your gauge to where you're getting about 20, 15 to 20 pounds. Uh, this one has already shot up, but they'll do that, but it'll come back down in just a second to what I want it to be reading. Open up your bumper smith. At this point, you want to pull your cradles out that you're going to have your welder set in. And there's six positions that you can set up this welder into. That makes it easier for you to get the welder out of your way in certain cases. And this is the way the welder sets in the cradle. Don't set it like that. That's not the way it goes. It's made to set just like that where the heat can rise up. Go ahead and take your work holes. You work hose and pull it out of your machine where you can use it. At this point, you've already got your nitrogen on. You can turn your air on. Plug it up with your air hose. You're going to be on air setting first. These machines adjust based on air flowing or nitrogen flowing. You want to set that at about three pounds. All right, there's my three pounds sitting on the air side. Now I'm going to go over to the nitrogen side, and I'm going to set it on three pounds. You want to get everything ready to do a well, and you have to have these afloat. Now, since I'm not ready to do a well, I'm going to go back to the air side. My airs are flowing. My nitrogens are flowing. At this point, you want to hook up your electrical. When you hook, hook your electrical up, Keep in mind that this little GFI here will have a little green light on. Also over here on your switch where your welder plugs up, you've got a switch where you can turn it on and off. you also got a temperature control. Set it on about medium. That's a good operating range for this machine. All right, and at this point, since we're going to go on into doing some wells, what I would do is go ahead and flip my switch on. That way my welder can be heating up. Where when I get ready to do the weld, it'll be hot enough to go ahead and do the weld. You've got your arms to operate off of. You've got your work holes right here to work with to do your grinding and your V-grooving or what have you. And you've got your gauges ready. So at this point we're going to stop and we're going to set up to where we can show you how to do a weld. Alright, the well, first thing we want to do is show you what you gotta have in order to perform a whale, it won't take but a second, and then we're gonna go into doing a whale. The number one thing is these burr bits. You need the rounded one, and you need a point one. The point pointed one is gonna be for drilling out where you do a tab at. And of course, side grinders. You need a Rolox, and you need a side grinder. This I use about a 50 grit on it. Of course, you've got your DA because you're a body man and you've got an 8 inch sander. They'll come into the play on the tail end of this. Now, pick out a couple of polypropylene rods because you're working on a polypropylene bumper. Not about 90% of all bumpers are polypropylene, TPO or TEO. This particular rod that comes with the machine, flat rod, flat ribbon, 12 inches long, is the one you'll be using. Now, what we're going to show you here, I'm going to get my welder. I've already pre-ground a couple of places. Now these are just practice wells. I ran them with that round-headed die grinder with the round burr tool. 
And I just run down in there far enough that I can bury my well because this is my front surface. This is a surface we're going to paint over. Backside don't matter. So I'm going to run you two wells and I want you to get how to do it. But at the same rate, before I do my wells every time, I always feather edge around it. And that comes into play later when I show the latter part of a video. But it's important not to have that painted surface there and it being, you know, glossy. You want it dull. Now then, we're going to get into doing a well here. Now the one thing I want to get across to you is when you watch these wells start coming about and you go to heating the tip of this rod, it'll go to looking like glass that's fixing the melt off of it. I'm hoping you can see that. Now, at this point, I'm going to trip this thing over to the nitrogen side because I'm fixing to run a well. Now, in, in this school that we're going to do on these wells, I'm going to teach you what is a non-critical well and a critical well. This is really a non-critical well. You could do it with air by itself. Critical wells are the wells that runs all the way out to the edge of the bumper where you've got to do a T-well or a tab or any place that's critical. These wells are not really critical. But I want you to take note that what I always do is back over onto the painted surface, and I'm not worried about that paint blistering because I'm going to grind it off. I will start that well, and when I see a little clear bubble begin to form right down in there, you'll see that material begin to roll. And at that point, you just keep heating it right out in front of it. When you're running it, what you're doing is you're running at about a 45 degree. And every so often, you're going to have to back that welder off in order to re-grab the rod to keep from burning your finger. Well, it won't burn it, but it'll get off a hot. It's like a hair dryer. But you just run that well right on through to the end of the place that you've got the, your welder. Now, when I get to the end of that well, I take the back side of my welder and I just pinch it on just like that. Now, I'm going to run another one so you can see what I was saying. Right back here on the back side there, I'm beginning to show a little bubble there in front of it. Sometimes it may show up a different color, but usually it'll, it'll show up kind of clear looking. In this case, if the bumper uh, is melting into the rod so fast, that it's showing up the same color of the bumper, which is gray. And this is an old Nissan bumper. And they're polypropylene, but they got two other mixes in them, which I'm sure they've done so they can make it as cheap as they can. And plus, a lot of it has to do with putting a release agent into the system where you can get it out of the mold. Now, just take that weld off. Now, we have performed two wells there. Right quick, I'm going to show you how I did that particular well to create it. What I did, I took my home uh, burr tool off my die grinder. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to leave none of that edging on there. I want that out of my way. You want that well when it's running as clean as you can get it. I can reach back over because I left my machine over on the nitrogen because I was going to do another well. And you can kind of warm that slot up a little bit where you're running a well. Now when we go to running actual repairs, this would be all the way through the bumper. And naturally it would be a place cut all the way through to the other side. What we're doing now, we just want you to check how you get this here rod to melt down in there. I wanted you to be able to see that when you're running that well, you're melting those materials together. And believe you me, it will get hot on the finger. But these wells are simple to run. Right, like I said, just pinch it off. Now then, I'm going to check my machine since I'm going to stop on the nitrogen for a while. I'm going to go back over to the air setting. And if it's going to be a while before I do another weld, I'll just go ahead and flip my welder off. Now, what it's doing now, it's actually cooling down because it's got the air flowing through it. 
There's no current going to it because I've switched that back over. My temperature, I left it set right where it was at. I'm on the air setting, so I'm letting it cool down. These welders have to cool all the way to cold before you can unhook all these, the holes of the air before you can unhook it. Or you can go ahead and unhook your electrical, but you must let the air flow through it for at least five to seven minutes. Now, what I want to show you here is, on this first weld I ran, which was this one, it's already got cold. I can take my Rolox with my 50 grit on it and I can lightly cut it. Now there's something that's very important right here that I want you to catch. There's a, when you're grinding with that Rolox, you'll get what they call slag running over. Now, I'm going to show you right quick how to get this off of there because you want a good clean weld. Now stop this video for a second. Alright, we're going to pick back up on this. This is where we want to clean this weld up right here. And then naturally, if we was going to use this bumper, we'd clean up all three of them and we'd prime them in. But my point is, I want to show you how to clean all that slag off. Get your 8 inch sander, or you can do it with the 6 inch, but you have to have 80 grit, at least 80 grit to clean it up. I use the 8 inch because the rotation of it gives me a better cut. Take a good look at that. I'm bringing the video up close how clean the well ended up being. And that well flowed down into that slot that I made or where I had beat it out. And it is almost perfectly level with the surface of the bumper. You want it just a fraction below. Because at this point, what you would do is if this was a single well, these other two weren't here, and this was where you repaired this bumper. You'd take and feather edge it back Put you a light coat of waterborne primer on it. Reason for the waterborne is you want something underneath your filler. Never put filler over this right here. If you put filler over a raw part of a bumper, the release agents are going to cause the filler to turn loose. Waterborne primer is non aggressive. When you put it on that surface, what you're doing is you're sealing off those release agents. And after that waterborne primer dries real good, you come back and lightly sand it with 180 grit paper. And I'm talking about by hand, just lightly hit it. Come back and put you some metal glaze polyester. Do not use rigid filler. Use the polyester because you need always on a bumper a small percentage of flexibility. Even though this is considered a rigid bumper, it still has to give a certain amount because it is plastic. But anyway, and when you get through working your filler, then you come back and put you another coat of waterborne on it. Let that set up. Lightly sand that. Get rid of your, what you call your, I call it hair. It fuzzes up. You may have to put two coats. But either way, when you get it down to the point that you're ready, you can uh, slick it out like you do any other type of body work. You know what I'm saying when I say body work because uh, you're a body man. When you get through, turn around, seal it or send it to the paint shop, let your painter seal it and go with it. He knows how to slick it out from there.